Our first lecture was about steady uniform flow, which means there's no change in the cross section or the velocity or anything. This time we're going to talk about gradually varied flow, and this is where the depth and velocity change over a long reach. In this type of flow, the channel's surface resistance is a significant factor in the flow process. So we can rewrite the energy equation You'll see in this energy equation that pressure head is gone because it is open channel flow. You'll also see that we changed the elevation to the depth of flow. Uh, we've added in the bed slope over the distance for that head, and then there's this HF head loss here. And this is the channel's resistance head loss. If I take this modified energy equation and rearrange it, I will get the change in y over x is the bed slope minus the slope of the energy grade line all over 1 minus the Froude number squared. If we have steady uniform flow where the depth of the water at all points uh, matches, the change in depth of the water at all points matches the slope of the bed, then that steady uniform flow in dy over dx is equal to zero. We need to define the water surface profiles, and we're going to do that with a couple of terms first. So we have yn, this is the normal flow depth, and then we have yc, which is the critical flow depth, And the critical flow depth is the minimum value for specific energy for that flow. First up is horizontal. This is where we're going to have zero slope. We're not going to have very good flow, if any, and it's a special case. Hence why I put the little star next to flow doesn't exist. We can have some horizontal, but it's not going to add energy to the system. Next up is a mild slope. This is where the normal depth is greater than the critical depth, and we have a shallow bed slope and everything moves along at a lovely pace. Then there's critical. Critical is where the normal depth is the critical depth. Then we move up to steep. And this is where our critical depth exceeds our normal depth. Last, we have adverse, and water cannot flow at a uniform depth. So it's, it's never going to even out and have a normal depth. And like the horizontal, this is a special case. Along with the slope classification, there is a number designation. For example, for a mild slope where the normal depth is over the critical depth, if our actual water flow is above both of those, so our actual depth y is greater than the normal depth, is greater than the critical depth. This has a number designation of 1. If we fall between those depths, then we're going to have a number designation of 2. And last, if we fall below both of those depths, We will be a number three designation. Table 12-2 shows all the classifications and surface profiles for the number designation and the slope type. For example, if we're given this horizontal surface, that has a reservoir with a sluice gate that then opens, we have two surface profiles created that I've shown here in purple, section one and section two. 
and we want to classify these. Coming to table 12-2, here is our horizontal, and look, there is our example right there with the sluice gate. So we've got an H3 right after and an H2, and that looks exactly like what we were given. We can use a direct step method to figure out how long the reach needs to be in our gradually varied flow to reach a specific depth. And that's if we know the depth and velocities uh, coming into and out of the system. That reach equation, the change in x, is going to be the difference between the two depths plus the difference in velocity heads all over the difference in slopes. So that's going to be bed slope minus the slope of the energy grade line or the friction slope. We can use Manning's equation to assume the friction slope, which is going to be Manning's coefficient squared times the average velocity of the two points squared all over that K factor for Manning's equation squared and the hydraulic radius average raised to the four thirds. We're given a rectangular channel of plain timber that is five feet wide and carries 60 cubic feet per second of water. The bed slope is six ten thousandths, find, and the initial depth is three feet. Find the distance to where the depth is two and a half feet. Using our equation above, we have been given our two depths, we have our bed slope, we have our flow rate Q, and we're assuming incompressible fluid, so we can find our velocities. Q is equal to VA, so we have 60 cubic feet per second is equal to velocity one times three feet by five feet. So velocity one is going to equal to four feet per second. And velocity two is going to be that new depth, two and a half feet times five feet and we're going to speed up a tiny bit at 4.4 feet per second. Now I need the slope of the energy grade line or the friction slope. So our estimate equation, SF is equal to Manning's N squared, velocity average squared all over K squared, hydraulic radius average uh, to the four thirds. I'm going to need some hydraulic radiuses. Radii. Area over perimeter. Hydraulic radius one is going to be my area all over the wetted perimeter. And that's going to be 1.3636 and my hydraulic radius two is that new depth. which is 1.25. And both of these are feet. My Manning's N is going to come from table 12.1. For wood, I have a range of 0.01 to 0.03, 1, 3, I'm sorry, 0.01 to 0.013. So I'm going to use something a little bit on the rougher side because it is planed. 
use n of 0.012. We are also going to use a k value of 1.486 because we are in US units of feet and seconds. All right, I need to find some averages. My average velocity is going to be 4 plus 4.4 .4 divided by 2. So that is going to be 4.2. Oops. My velocity 2 is 4.8, so my average velocity is 4.4, sorry. And then my hydraulic radius average is the 1.3636 plus 1.25 over 2, and this is going to be 1.307. Plugging this into our energy grade line, slope, I get 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 4. And I could take that information and plug it into my change in length. Plugging in all my values, I get a final answer of about 1,390, well that's a 5. Fourteen hundred feet. That's how long it's going to take for those that new depth to be acquired.